Hi everybody, everybody I'm back. Everybody, Jeannie Young is back and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited today because today at the Young's house, Jeannie Young is going to share with you all how I make amazing pork sticks. They're so easy to make. They do not require a lot of ingredients and you know, you make them Gina Young style, they're gonna be so tasty. Here are the lovely ingredients you will need. You all never had my pork steaks before. You better make yourself. Everyone, of course you will need some lovely pork steaks. Here's what my pork steaks look like. They're huge, right? And they're gonna be so delicious. You will need a onion. You will need bell peppers. And of course, you're gonna need some amazing seasonings to make these pork steaks taste amazing. Today we have Montreal steak seasoning. We're going to use parsley, onion and garlic powder. We're going to use some beef bouillon powder. We have some pepper and salt, and you will need some flour. If you don't wanna use the flour, feel free to use cornstarch in replace of the flour. You're gonna need some sazon. Sazon is gonna give you amazing color and a great taste. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna make some sides to go along with these amazing pork steaks, and the sides are going to be boiled potatoes. So right here I have some potatoes, and we have some Eckridge sausage that I've sliced up. That's gonna go inside of our vegetables, and our vegetables are the green beans and the corn. We're gonna mix that together. We're gonna to put some meat in it and a chicken bouillon, and of course you're gonna need some butter. Let's make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really easy, yet so tasty hey recipe. Everyone. So one of the first things that I wanna do, I want to cut these humongous pork steaks. I wanna cut them in half, Feel free to cut them into strips, into cubes, however you would like to do. But it, I don't suggest leaving them whole because they're so big. We wanna cut them and then we wanna season them. And then we wanna let that seasoning kinda of soak down into the meat for at least 15 minutes. So let's get started. So, we're gonna just do one at a time. just like so, pork steaks are absolutely amazing. They have so much flavor, they don't get dry. Oh, and I cannot wait. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna fry that one up, and this one as well. I kinda like to feel around to where the bone is, and then that's when I make the decision on how am I gonna cut it, okay? See that? Perfect. All right, we're gonna do these as well. Same thing, figure out where that bone ends at and kinda just make sure everyone has a nice hunk of meat. <laughs> I said it, a nice hunk of meat. <laughs> All right, so now, we're going to, same thing here, and then we're going to season. I want to season on this here. Here in a second, I'll be right back. So now it's time to season our beautiful meat. Let's go in with some salt. Any kind of salt that you like to use would be just fine. Don't be afraid to season. Those of you that are out there that are afraid to season, your food will be flavorless. Don't do it to yourself. All right, so we're gonna season both sides because these are nice pieces of meat. Sometimes when I have a meat that's really thin, I'll just season one side and it'll be fine. But when it's much thicker, you wanna season both sides, okay? Because you don't want one side to be flavorless. <laughs> All right, so we're going in with some of this beautiful sazon. You only need a little bit for each one. A little bit of this goes a long way. It's gonna give you amazing color and a beautiful flavor. I love to use this on almost everything that I make. All right, in we go with the sazon, just like so. Now these are not going to get breaded with flour today. We're just gonna fry these up. I'm gonna share with you all, this recipe is so amazing. It's a lot of fun and it's easy. Like who doesn't want an easy recipe? 
I know I do. All right, and we go with the parsley because it makes everything nice and beautiful. And my mouth is watering already. Garlic and onion powder. And we're gonna let this beautiful seasoning soak in for 15 minutes before we go any further. Okay, let's see, I wanna open this up so I can get that seasoning down in there. Here we go. Just like so. We're gonna put some Montreal steak seasoning. Keep in mind that it does have some salt and pepper in it already. So be careful with your salt and your pepper that you're gonna put on, just like so. And then we're gonna go in with some pepper, not too much, just a little bit, cause we're gonna season both sides. Beautiful, and this smells absolutely amazing. All right, so now I'm really getting excited. Let's flip these over, just like so. We're gonna season the other side. I hope you all are having an amazing day today, as well as a great work week. I hope you all are being safe, using your hand sanitizer, <laughs> and staying far away from practically everyone. <laughs> Absolutely, stay safe, guys, and I'm so serious about that. And stay prayed up, like we have to pray. We have to pray about everything that goes on in our lives. All right, so now that we flip those over, let's season once again. Back in with that onion and garlic. Don't be afraid to use it. It's gonna give you some good flavor. Hoo-wee! Salt, not too much. Just a little bit. Don't get crazy with the salt, guys. Put that color on there. I'm running out of parsley, guys. I need to get me some more parsley. I'm not going to the store anytime, <laughs> anytime soon. All right, so let's go in with that Montreal steak seasoning. And we are gonna put Sazon once again on this side as well. Beautiful. A Little bit of pepper, not too much. Just like so. All right, sazon, and then we let it set for 15 minutes. Let those spices soak down into this beautiful meat here. All right, once I continue this, I'll be right back. Everyone, take a look at these amazing pork steaks. Nice and seasoned. This is how well seasoned all of your meats should look. Let's set them aside, all right, just like so, and then we're gonna get started on our side dish, which is really simple. We have a pan here. We have whole kernel, sweet corn with the liquid. Put that in your pan, all right? And we also have string beans with the liquid. Get that in your pan as well, all right? My pan size is perfect. I almost worried, <laughs> wondering if I had the correct size pan, but this will do the trick. Okay, so now we're gonna go in and put that lovely sausage. If you're that person that loves chicken or turkey sausage or beef sausage, put it right on in. You don't have to use the pork. Okay, so we got that in there. And as far as the chicken bouillon, it's gonna give you amazing flavor. If you don't have access to chicken bouillon, feel free to use your Maggie Pollo that you may have. We're only gonna use a half of a cube, or you can use less than that, but it's really gonna bump up the flavor with this dish here. Okay, so get that in there. You don't have to break it up too much because it will dissolve while it's in there. I do want to season it. We're going to go in with some onion and garlic powder. Just like so, we don't need the salt because the bouillon has the salt in it, a little bit of black pepper, and then we're going to go in with some butter. And this side dish is done and out the way. All right. That butter right there will do the trick. I'm gonna set this on the stove and I'll be While our meat marinates with those beautiful spices, let's go ahead and get our beautiful veggies cut up. We have some bell peppers here that I thawed out yesterday. We have an onion that we're slicing up. I have Dakota over to my right. He's working on schoolwork. So we're getting that done. We have Prince and Polo over here on the floor. They're asleep. You can see Prince on the bed. And Polo is actually up against the wall. He's there, but <laughs> he's sleeping up against the wall. 
All right, so now let's get started on our veggies. All right, so what we wanna do, we're just gonna go in, cut these bad boys up just like so. Cut them up in strips if you like. Cut them up into cubes if you like. It's really up to your discretion. But when I make pork, I love, you know, I can't really say when I make pork because when I make just about anything, I love bell peppers. Especially if I'm gonna make some type of gravy. Bell peppers and onions is amazing in gravy. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna continue to slice these and when I come back, we'll get the onion sliced well, up. Let's tackle this onion. Me and onions, we just don't get along. We just don't. How about getting along today, Onion? I don't want to cry over you. <laughs> I don't, guys. It's the worst when you're recording. You know, you try your hardest not to cry. And then my eyes start watering. I have to go <laughs> and fix my face before I come back on camera. All right, so let's, I'm just going to slice it. We'll just do that. All right, just like so. Perfect. And now we're going to turn this pan on so that we can start cooking up our amazing pork steak. So we have our potatoes peeled. Let me show you how I like to cut my potatoes when I'm making boiled potatoes. This is one of my favorite ways to make potatoes. This is how my grandma used to make potatoes and I live for this. It's so easy, so much fun, and it tastes delicious. Okay, so we've somewhat quartered the potatoes just like that and we're gonna keep them like that. Okay, this is really simple. Just wanna make sure you don't overcook your potatoes to where they turn into mush, you know. And you don't wanna undercook them. If your potatoes are too big, just slice them, you know, once again. All right, just like so. If your potato's too big, cut it in half, okay? Just like this. Slice that bad boy just like this. All right, and I'm gonna get the pan that we're going to use to boil our potatoes in. These potatoes have been washed in cold water until the water has turned nice and clear. And what happens when the water turns nice and clear? You're rinsing off a lot of that unwanted starch. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to cut these off camera and I'll be right back. So you can see that our potatoes have all been cut. They're in cold water. You want to salt your water. If you're making noodles, if you're making potatoes or rice, always salt your water. Any kind of salt that you like to use, that'll be just fine. You want to season those potatoes in there. Now let's take them over to the stove and turn them on to a medium high heat. And we're going to cover them with the lid until they get nice and fork tender. And right here, I've turned this burner on also so that our green beans our sausage and our corn can start to cook up. Let's make our way back over this way and throw these amazing pork steaks right into this pan. Our pan is starting to get nice and hot. When it's hot enough, I'm gonna throw hey, everyone. Let's take our amazing pork steaks that we have washed, cut, seasoned. And the seasoning has soaked on, has kind of marinated in the meat for maybe 20 minutes. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We have a pan here that has vegetable oil, not too much vegetable oil, just enough to get them nice and golden brown. Let's get them in that pan. You wanna make sure your oil's really hot. That sizzle that you hear right there, that's the sizzle that you wanna hear so you can achieve a beautiful golden brown color onto this meat. You don't wanna cook this on low. You don't wanna cook it up too high. Okay, you want to achieve that perfect color that we all love. You know what color I'm talking about. All right, so let's grab the others. Let's get them on here. Don't overcrowd your pan. Overcrowding your pan can cause for your pork steaks to steam. All right, just going to put just enough in there to get three is fine. Okay, and then we'll just do a couple other batches. I don't mind doing a couple other batches. So once I start to see a beautiful golden brown ring towards the bottom of these, 
that's our indication that it's time to turn them. And never worry about uh, once you achieve that golden brown color. My mouth is watery. <laughs> once you achieve that color, go ahead and flip it over. But some of you might say, but it's not done in the inside, Gina. I know, I understand that. But what's going to happen is we're going to make an amazing gravy for these bad boys, and they're just going to simmer in that gravy. And during that time, while these are simmering down in that amazing gravy, they're going to finish cooking. So don't worry about that, all right? Well, let's check in on our pork steaks. Let's give them a nice turn. I'm starting to see that golden brown color. This is what we're wanting. See how nice and beautiful that golden brown color is. What you want to achieve, okay? And if you turn it over just like this one and it doesn't have that, don't freak out. We can always flip it back over. No problem there. All right? Beautiful. Now, keep in mind that I'm going to do several batches. I'm not going to make you all watch me do several batches. You'll just watch this batch and then I'll show you how to make this amazing quick and simple gravy. And our potatoes are almost done. Let's take a look at them. They're cooking up just beautifully. Okay, here in a second I'm going to go in with my fork and see if they're nice and fork tender. It's time to turn this second batch over. Let's get them turned over and then we'll check our potatoes. Beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous color. Oh, see that right there? That's amazing color. All right. Okay. I'm going to take a different fork. And I want to check on my potatoes. If they're nice and pork tender, we're going to take them out of the pan. They're perfect. I'm going to turn them off just like so. And you'll meet me back over to the eye. So now that our potatoes are perfectly done. Make sure you don't overcook your potatoes to where they're just mush. You don't want that. You want them to have a little bit of texture. Just make sure they're just perfectly fork tender. So you can see that I've drained the potatoes. What we're going to do is we want to put a load of butter onto your potatoes. And here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to stir it in because if I stir it in, what's going to happen is we're going to break up those potatoes. Don't do that. Just put the butter right on top and just let it melt down into those potatoes. <laughs> Guys, when I do these videos, I get myself so excited when I'm talking about the food. <laughs> ah, something else in this kitchen. So now that we have the butter on, get you some pepper. Nice amount. I'm going to open this up. And then we're going to do some salt. And then we're going to do garlic powder. Absolutely. The garlic powder really sets this potato off. Oh, hey, make you some. Make it just like this Gina Young style. You will not be let down. You're going to say, okay, Gina, that's like my favorite potato nowadays. Because it will be. It's so delicious. So once we get the parsley on there, we're going to put a lid on it just like so and give that butter a chance to just melt on top of that garlic. Did we put salt on top of the salt and the pepper? Did I put salt? <laughs> I'll have to taste one and see. I just have to taste one and see. If I don't taste salt, then that means we didn't use salt. Okay, I'm going to go in right for one on the top because I need to know. Mmm. 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 <laughs> it needs salt. <laughs> mm. So good. This is my favorite potato. Just like so, get that lid on, let the butter melt, and you have boiled potatoes. Gina Young style. Our veggies are done. We're going to make our way. Here in a second, I'm going to grab all of my pork steaks because they're done. Let's get started on our gravy here in a second. Everyone, take a look at these amazing pork steaks. Beautiful, right? Absolutely they are. Oh, they look so good. Okay, so right here in the pan, we have oil. And I put the onion in there just to make sure my oil was nice and hot. I want to saute up these beautiful veggies. I'm going to take the onions apart a little bit, just like so. I have some amazing smells coming out of this household right now. My goodness. I know my one, my neighbors right now are probably wondering, what 
is she over there making? We can smell it from the street. I'm making pork steaks, and these bad boys are going to be delicious. So I want to saute up my onions and my bell peppers just for a few minutes. You don't have to saute them too much. Keep in mind that they're going to also cook in with our gravy. All right? I'm just going to cook them until the onions get nice and translucent. And what translucent means is when the onions start to get nice and clear in color, we'll take them out. We're just going to set them on top of the meat and then we'll start to make a gravy with that oil that's in the bottom of the pan. So now what I want to do right now is talk about the gravy while our veggies cook up. If you don't want to make a homemade gravy, guess what? It's okay. It's okay. You can always go out and purchase something like this. These are absolutely amazing and they come in all different types of flavors. Give it a try if you haven't tried it before. Absolutely you can. You don't always have to make a homemade gravy. Okay, so what we're going to do, I have some water here. And we're going to flavor the water. We're going to make a broth with this bouillon powder right here. Okay, so get you some in there. I'm going to make a lot of gravy because I have a whole lot of pork steaks to cover with this gravy. I want these pork steaks smothered in this gravy. All right, and I want it to be very flavorful. Now what I'll do, I'm going to take this spoon and I want to taste my broth and see if I'm happy with the flavor. If I'm not happy with the flavor, then guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put more of the bouillon in, okay? And we're also gonna season the gravy up with um, garlic powder and onion powder and parsley flakes. Perfect. Mm, perfect. <laughs> All right, now that's nice and tasty. All right, we have some flour that we'll need to use to thicken up our gravy. And then I have two cups here of hot water. The hot water is going to give me more gravy. Okay, so what we're going to do, I like to use equal parts oil or butter if you're using um, towards equal parts flour. And we're going to cook that flour until you cook off the rawness flavor of the flour, if that makes any sense, just for about maybe four minutes or so. And then we'll start adding our liquid, okay, which will be our beef broth. And then we'll go in with our water and we'll season as needed. Okay, so our veggies are just about done. I like to give the veggies a head start. I always like to because I don't want raw veggies in with my, you know, my meal. So let's go ahead and get these out of the pan just like so. And I'll be right back. And let's get started on our really quick and simple, yet so tasty gravy. So you can see that we put our veggies, we just set them on top of the meat. And now I have the oil that has been flavored with the peppers and the onions. Okay, I'm gonna go in with equal parts flour. I'm just gonna eyeball mine, but in the description below, I will tell you exactly how much you will need for your recipe. Okay, and like I said, it is just equal parts flour, equal parts oil. You don't want for your flour and oil to look like plaster. It should not look like that, okay? It should look somewhat like, um, let's just say peanut butter, a light peanut butter. Okay, we're just going to do this to stir it around in that oil just like so until we cook out the raw flavor in the flour. Okay, pretty simple. That's because it is simple. And everything that Gina Young shows you all, it's going to be easy to make. It's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to taste absolutely amazing. Trust me when I tell you this. Now, a lot of you like to use the pan drippings. Sometimes I do that, but I don't do it a lot. Okay, I like, for some reason, I just like to clean my pan out and start out with a nice clean pan. But we still achieve that beautiful flavor from the onions and the peppers. Okay? And like I said, feel free to use those crispy, the beautiful fawn that's in the bottom of the pan after cooking your 
pork sticks. Okay, now you can see the consistency that I'm getting and you can see how the color has changed, which is exactly what we're wanting. Keep in mind, you don't want this to look like plaster. It shouldn't be hard to stir around. The raw flavor is almost cooked out. And now what we're gonna do, and, and you can see I'm just using a rubber spatula. And when you're mixing in your liquid, you want to continue to stir as you're pouring in your liquid. That's very, very important. Okay, so see everything's nice, smooth, and velvety. We're gonna go in with this broth here. Being careful because steam will come up. Pour this in and keep stirring and don't stop stirring, okay? Very important that you keep stirring if you don't want any lumps, okay? Just like so, pretty simple. All right, I'm gonna continue to put more liquid in until I get the desired texture that I'm looking for for my gravy, okay? I'm gonna stir until I don't feel that dried uh, roux at the bottom. It will thicken up. Just like so, I am using hot water. I never use cold water or cold broth when I'm making gravy. All right, see that right there? That's what you're wanting. I'm starting to really get excited now. And now, let's talk about the color. How are you gonna make this nice and brown? There's a couple of different things we can do. There is kitchen bouquet you can always use, and I'll show you that. Kitchen bouquet doesn't give you much flavor, but it'll make any sauce or gravy turn nice and dark like you want it. Or you can use soy sauce. Either one of those would be fine. You also can use, let me show you, be right back. So now it's time to turn our gravy nice and dark. I have our gravy on a medium. This here, better than bouillon, you can use it. This is the vegetable base, I think. Yeah, this is a seasoned vegetable. You can use the beef, you can use any of them. All right, now, soy sauce, you can use it. This one right here is the kitchen bouquet. If I can open it, we'll get some nice color onto our gravy. There we go, a little bit of elbow grease. Get you some in there, don't be afraid to use it. It's gonna give you an amazing color. All right, voila. <laughs> hey, 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 I have that perfect consistency that I love for gravy. And now we have that beautiful color that we're all used to when you think of smothering some nice pork steaks. Look at this, it's beautiful, right? And you better believe it's tasty. So now I do wanna go in and season. Garlic powder for sure. Pepper, absolutely. Parsley, just to make it pretty. Come on now. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to put this aside, give it a nice stir. Oh yeah, <laughs> Ooh -wee, look at that, look at that. Come on in here and look at this. My goodness, look at this gravy. There are absolutely no lumps. I gotta taste it. I gotta taste it, I have to taste this right now. taste. Going in, I'm going in, I'm going in. I got the little teeny weeny spoon, but that's enough to taste. Look at that. Oh, mm, listen here. <laughs> listen here. Always taste your food so you know what you're feeding to your family and friends and your loved ones. Mm, mm, mm. Man, that gravy is good. That's some good eating right there. Now we're going to take this pork steak just like so and nestle it down. <laughs> oh, see now, my mouth is officially watering. Let me know anytime during this video. If your mouth started watering and your stomach started rumbling. Mm. The um, pork steaks, that they, the ones that don't fit in there, don't freak out. I'm just gonna put them in another pan of gravy. Okay, I don't mind whisking up a quick batch of gravy just to get the other pork steaks in. 
See this right here? This is an abundance of love. Y'all never had any good loving, baby. <laughs> hey, right here is where you're gonna find it, right in this pan. Make you some, make it for your family and friends and all of your loved ones, for sure. Let's get this down in there. Get down in that pan, you hear me? Oh, cause I'm gonna devour you. And it looks like I'm gonna be able to, can I fit you in there somewhere? Let's see. We'll try to make it fit. We'll try to make it fit. Let's just see. And if not, I can eat that bad boy just like this. <laughs> With those potatoes. All right, get those veggies in there. We're gonna let this simmer for at least 35 to 40 minutes. And these pork steaks are gonna be fall off the bone. You hear me? Hoo wee If y'all enjoyed this video, Give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know. Tell the whole world about Gina Young and what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Absolutely. When I come back, we're going to say a prayer. I'm going to let you all have that first bite. Be back. And take a look at this amazing goodness here in this pan. We have smothered pork steaks. You all said, Gina, can you show us how you make those pork steaks? And that's what we did today. These pork steaks have been smothered in gravy with these amazing spices and vegetables. I'm going in for this one. This one right here is calling my name. Oh right there <laughs> and give me some of those veggies my goodness look at this oh, I'm so excited I couldn't be more excited take a look at this I just want you to look down in this pan look how gorgeous these are who wouldn't like to have this and the veggies they're perfect they're not mushy they still have some nice bite I'm gonna continue to let these simmer in this amazing gravy. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for today and for every day. Lord, we thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Send your angels down to surround us day and night and your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions. Give us peace over our mind in the name of Jesus. No weapons formed against us shall prosper. In Jesus' name. Devil, you have no authority over this household. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the peace, and the joy that you bring us every day. We thank you for that, Lord. Amen. Let's dive in. Lord, we thank you for this amazing meal. All right, you all are going to get that first bite. I'm going to continue to let these bad boys simmer. Let's go. I know it's hot. I know it's hot. So the first thing that I want to do, amen once again to my beautiful prayer. First thing that we can do, let's try these potatoes. My favorite. Look at them. And they're so buttery and so flavorful. Taste one. Going in. Mm. Mm -hmm. So good. There's not a potato out there that could be more simple and better tasting. This is a potato you want to make. Taste another one. I'm just trying to wait because I know that that pork steak is extremely hot. And I really don't want to burn the roof of my mouth. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we go with the veggies. Oh yeah. Look at that. Beautiful, right? You better believe it is. Go on in. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> listen here. <laughs> you really something in that kitchen. You hear me? You are really something in that kitchen, girl. Mm -mm -mm. Look at this. Taste that. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. The flavor. Mmm. So tender so moist so flavorful the gravy is amazing and as always god bless you all thank you all for watching good night that's good